see in there. Let me just say that we are being recorded. Okay. So we're live on the internet and we have a camcorder recording uh, that will be uploaded to YouTube at a later date. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. And so then I guess we'll just take 10 seconds here for a moment of silence and hey, think about all the things we're thankful for and think about all the things that people are struggling with in, in your own life. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment? We don't today. Um, we'll move on to uh, superintendent's comments. Dr. Pierce, you are on. Good evening. A couple of things I want to bring you up to speed on. Um, <clears throat> Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and our PTC and volunteers did a phenomenal job virtually appreciating our teachers. And um, they brought lunch up one day, the teachers could drive through and get a box lunch. They did a variety of things virtually. But uh, I just wanted to put a word out that kudos to all of our teachers. Fantastic staff here, just wanted to let them know how much we appreciate all that they do. You may have seen some things in the news recently. Uh, a lot of different people are predicting what the state funding might look like moving ahead for schools. 
And I think it's a, just kind of a moving target as well as a crystal ball that you know, people giving their best shot. Steve might have an idea about that later if you want to share, but it's all prediction right now. But that doesn't always affect Oakdale um, in the same way it does other districts. However, I think the economy is probably where we need to put our focus. And that, um, we just need to keep an eye on those things as we move forward with budgets and things like that moving into next year. So just wanted to drop that out there that uh, that's not lost on me. It's new to me, but it's, uh, it's not lost on that. But, so your help would be appreciated. I contacted Julie Miller at the State School Boards Association about updating our board policy book, and she doesn't have anything for us yet. She had to go out of town to care for a parent, and with all the other things that she's had to do with um, in the middle of the pandemic, I think just probably a little bit behind on that. So we don't have anything for you yet on that. One question that recurs is uh, potential calendar changes for next school year. My recommendation right now is just that we wait and see what happens. Um, <laughs> we uh, changed our this year's school calendar for an end date that was different than what we had published. And but the question I hear on Zoom calls and things is about what about for next year? And the State Board of Education, State Department of Education, apparently is not concerned about having a uniform mandated beginning school date. It will be probably still rely on local discretion. The admin team and I are really just moving forward as if nothing will be different. However, in our discussions, we also, I remind them we probably need to have a plan B, maybe a plan C or a D, just in case we don't know if the schedules will be the same, if hours will be the same, if we have an A day and a B day, or what the future holds, but uh, that's on our radar. Unemployment claims, uh, Marlene. <laughs> we have had a number of unemployment claims filed against Oakdale that are all fraudulent. Some are our own employees that have very old addresses. Some, we don't even know who they are, but they put us down in them. But we, uh, the School Boards Association manages that for us and they're handling all of those. Um, at, home, at home with me the other day when my former employer notified me that I had filed unemployment against my previous school district, and I had not. And so, but I appreciate the employment here, so I don't have to do that. So. My husband and I also got one. Did you get one too? Yes. So, there we have that. So, we we're not that. immune to that. It makes me wonder if we had about 30, 30 letters a couple days ago come through. Yes, like almost and 30. employment, you know, the size of our employment, that staff that we employ. That's significant, I think, so I just imagine across and the nation. none of those just... had ever been employed at Oakdale Public School. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I don't know where they come up with it. So, um, looking ahead into the, uh, the next six months or so, you know, if we were in school right now, we would have been probably concluding or would have concluded our state mandated testing, which means we'd have over the summer to wait and for scores to come out in the fall. Minus that ability, one of my uh, things that I would like to see the admin team and the teachers do is to begin thinking about minus test scores and that data, um, what does Oakdale do well? How are we successful? We can look at historical data as well. We can look at benchmark and assessments uh, that are formative along the way. But without that piece of information, I think it might be wise for just to work with the teachers and some in professional development to say, what could, what's What's the cause? What's the what's the root of why this OCTA has a success as? And let's um, take a look at what things we want to keep. Maybe some things are duplicated, or maybe they're just not aligned. And really approach the site improvement plan, which is where very little probably improvement to build be had overall. But just as a campus plan, um, what does that look like? So if we align our our mission or things that we do with curriculum and our programs look at gaps, look where things are overlapping so that we can work smarter and not harder necessarily. You know, you've heard that phrase. Um, I think that's probably where I would like to see that sample art we can reconvene with our teachers, maybe in the fall. Which would eventually lead to goal setting and things like that as well. But um, that's all I had. And Andy, um, we were going to lead into, I guess Mike, you would be up next. And then we have a slideshow from our principals that we can turn and watch. So. Mr. Francis. Most of my things, if, if they have questions with regards to the purchases, they're going to vote on. So, okay, I'm okay. So we'll move ahead. 
Andy, can you start that slideshow? Good evening, school board. We're coming to you from our homes tonight, hopefully on the last board meeting of self-quarantine. Just wanted to update you on what's been going on in Oakdale in the middle school. We're preparing for Chromebook check-in on Friday and Monday when students will return their Chromebooks and their cords and the other items that belong to the school and clean up their lockers. So that should be two fun-filled days. Uh, also, we're preparing for a really interesting and unique graduation. So we will be broadcasting a slideshow live on YouTube under my name, Jill Lovely. You can search for me. That'll start at 6 p.m. It's about an hour long the slideshow. It's actually really cool. It has a lot of videos from teachers, present teachers and past teachers, and the students, the eighth grade valedictorians also have speeches embedded in the slideshow, and each student has a slide and some comments. So it's a really personalized graduation slideshow. After that, the eighth graders will come to the school and around 710 will start a parade through the Oakdale neighborhoods. Mr. Franz has kindly put together a schedule, um, a route for us, and he's also put together times so that we'll push out later today. So um, hopefully we will see you there. It's not the way we usually have it, where you all are handing diplomas and shaking hands, but it's the best we can do under these situations. So. Anyway, we are preparing for the next school year. We're excited about our new hires, and we're looking forward to what the future will bring. Thank you. Ms. Foster did not record hers, so she just wrote us a letter mainly as talking about distance learning and what they're gleaning out of that, looking ahead, um, being able to incorporate more Google Classroom and Seesaw and some of those things into our elementary programming. And um, just a kudos again to our teachers for the incredible work they've done during this time. And as you can see, they, the teachers put together a message to holding each word and it has a sentence that's sent, that's sent out to uh, our parents. Next slide. Personnel changes for next year. We have a couple of uh, a few people that are going on to do other things, Ken Hyde, Jessica Camp, Chip Miller, Lindsay Pullen, Chelsea Sutton, Carrie Vaughn, Rusty Wilhoy. Some of these I think you already took a look at maybe last month, but if not, they're kind of recaptured here in one slide. One of our newest hires is on to be recommended for hire this evening in our, uh, on another agenda item is Nicole Reen, and she's an Oakdale parent. And she is finishing her master's degree in library media at UCO, and she is interested in the seventh grade English language arts position. And then the next is Alex Sammons coming to us from Missouri. She is an OSU grad, yay. Uh, her degree is in speech pathology, but she has a master's in elementary, and she's been teaching at um, a Charter Innovation School in Missouri, and she was a Teach for America um, member. But um, she's coming to us, um, moving back this direction, and um, is very excited to join. I met both of these folks virtually, and they are just top-notch candidates. I could not be more pleased. Very, very quality folks. And that's their update. Thank you. Well, I have a confession to make. We started off the meeting, I started off the meeting, you think after the practice I've had over the last couple of years, using the June 9th. Uh, template. So that's why we're a little bit off order when we get this back one and made to all the order. So I apologize. Well, while we're critiquing you, Mr. You. President, we also didn't call into order uh, and start the meeting. So I think we actually technically have to repeat everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't call the meeting in order. Did you do it? Uh, well, I've I, I, I never held a vote to call the meeting in order. I just know you're here and we, we roll on. But the pledge was nice. I mean, I read an article in the paper today with, uh, with Charlotte Knightford, and she said, look, hey, I really like her writing. And she said, you know, embrace all these changes for the good that's in them. Don't see them as changes, just see them as good. And hey, that's a good thing. But well, we'll go back to the baseball agenda. How about that? 
So, with that being said, um, we are going to start with the consent agenda and 3.1. Do we have any questions on April's regular minutes from that meeting, from the board? No questions? Okay. Um, we'll go down to 3.2.1, uh, and that's general fund payments. Did anybody have any questions? Um, with any general fund accounting. And Aaron, since this is your first, I mean, never feel afraid to ask a question about anything because it takes some time to learn specific line items and things that are repetitive. And it, so don't, don't yeah. hesitate. Oh, yes. Okay. I looked it over. Um, we'll move on to the child nutrition payments. Um, any questions with the nutrition fund? I've got a question for Mr. France. I mean, you sent out a message, hey, we're going to roll over for next year. We're going to give you a credit this year. Um, how do we stand on that? I mean, was there a response to that? It was. Okay, uh, good. That form was more for Marlene's paperwork and efforts. Yeah. Just because she's okay. the one that do all the work. So I looked um, on the form. I think there was over 120 responses so far. Oh, that's good. So that'll help her out. <laughs> How many more reimbursements? Oh, for reimbursements. That was not for overdue lunch balances. That was for positive lunch balances. I, I was thinking more of the overdue balance. <laughs> <laughs> so I am sending emails out for that, but not a form. Okay. So the last I checked the other day, uh, the balance that is owed is cut in half a little week ago. Um, so that's a good sign. Okay. They're going to get an email every day until Friday. All right. Goal is to train and what was our cut in half number? So we went from 84 to about 4,000. That's pretty. We're making progress. That's good. I remember the days when it was 21. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Um, 3.2 building fund payments. Any questions on building fund payments for the board? Okay. Um, activity fund payments. I guess with our activity fund, should will we be ahead since we haven't been tapping into that, or are we going to be behind because we haven't been putting into it, you know, with aftercare and things like that that build that up? Yeah, we just don't have any more revenue coming in. Okay. All right. Um, 3.2.4 bond fund payments, 135 and 46. Any questions? Which, by the way, we're at the end of that. This is the end. No more payments to build. Well, there's two more payments to um, LWPB, which is somewhere around 7000 And then we have the other one, like the Earth. If you remember, a couple months ago, you all voted and approved to have the HVAC system all connected and the graphic display upgraded. So. They, uh, that comes from her smart. They were here actually yesterday for the first time on the site since that vote. So that's an open PO. Um, but that's a large, that's like 17,000, I believe. But in the end, uh, objective, have everything connected. Every room, every thermostat, um, and then being able to control it from online, anywhere, not just here. So uh, that's going to happen. That is the goal. That's what we're paying them to do. They're on it. Okay, good. Um, all right, now we move on to uh, Steve for your uh, monthly treasurer's report. Sure. And review. Uh, you also have a hard copy of that uh, there at your table as well. Thank you. There were no changes to the uh, chart itself. Uh, all of those numbers are, are still consistent with where they were last month. But I do anticipate that Marlene will process probably into your payroll in May. Uh, and so you'll see those numbers uh, change this, you know, in this next month. On well, the next page are cash balances. And in the bank, we have a $6,825,873.11 at the end of April. Uh, we have 107130 uh warrants for cash balance of $6,718,740. That compares to a little over nine million last year and three point nine million in April of two thousand eighteen. Uh, the next page is just kind of a reconciliation of assets and liabilities. Uh, at the bottom of it, there's a little investment report that shows the interest that we've earned to date. 
think is our uh, comparisons. Uh, the first one is a comparison of the last three fiscal years. Uh, and so when you look at uh, the right column for FY20, you know, the payroll amount was 206000 That was, a, was about 26000 higher than last year. Uh, the non-payroll was 14, it was just $1,000. Exactly, kind of where we stand by July 1st as far as collections. I mean, we will we're under or over. Right. If you look at this time last year, uh, we, we collected about 300,000 and uh, a little about 280,000 in May and June okay. last year. So, okay. If we collect <coughs> it, then we'll be a lot closer. And we may very well. So, okay. it may just be a time to time. Uh, I do want to, you know, there's several pages of reconciliation, but I do want to skip back to uh, the bond principal and interest schedule. Uh, it's got the green and yellow highlighting. Um, just to point out uh, the bond payments that we have coming up, we have a June 1st bond payment that's in gold, $1,195,000, $687,050. And then that highlighted in yellow bond payment due July 1st of uh, 1.479. That will uh, take a large portion of our sinking fund away. And so I was talking to Marley earlier. You know, next year we'll probably be looking in the ball with non payable warrants, which we haven't had to endure for a couple of years, but uh, next year we'll probably be one of those years just because of the bond projects. Uh, finalizing and these, uh, these bond issues uh, <coughs> payments coming up kind of coinciding at the same time with the art access resources that we have where we've been able to purchase our own warrants. We've had non 
pay more, so we just didn't go to buy our own because we had a bunch of available in other bonds. Questions? We did get a little bit of uh, good news, so we'll have an additional 15000 through the CARES Act of uh, funding that we'll talk about how we might want to utilize that. So it's not a big pot of money, but at this point in time, for us, anything helps. And I saw on a list of uh, 527 school districts in the state of Oklahoma on the CARES Act. You know where Oakdale was on that list? 527. We are dead last. Just our Title I percentage is so low. Yeah, dead last in the entire state. Mm -hmm. You can say first. Just put the page up. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good thing. Like, in a way, until they're going out for your money. Any yeah. other questions on this? No, I do not. Thank you, Steve. Yes, thank you. Okay. That goes through the consent agenda. I went line by line because it just felt like the past few meetings we just we we sort of maybe go, go went over some things, just kind of glossed over them. So now we can we get more comfortable with it. Do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda items? I'll move to approve the consent agenda items. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. That was smooth tonight. <laughs> All right, moving on. We've already done public comment. Um, so, and we've already done the superintendent's report. We've done, out of order, we've done Mr. Francis' report and the principal's report. Um, we'll move on to 4.3 independent committee organization reports. And this will clean us up for this meeting, for sure. Do we have any? Um, moving on to uh, five, consideration discussion of possible action on a furniture order for the new wing um, from where they can direct for $12,057. Um, any comments? I mean, I, I, I went to your email. So that's just the furniture to um, get the classroom set up and the office area set up. Um, I mean, there's a lot of options you can buy furniture from. You can get real fancy. Um, but I did talk to fifth grade teachers that live in there. Um, you want to get something that they're going to use and it's going to be ideal for their teaching environment. Um, so that being said, they wanted tables and chairs. They moved around. Um, one teacher, science teacher, wanted to continue to use her science tables from her fifth grade classroom. So we're going to do that. Um, so, uh, the information they gave me, uh, I came up with some things. We're going to do a consistent color, black, grayish, um, and go with a lot of different things. Um, that's, uh, that's an estimate on furnishing it out. Okay. Any, any other questions, discussions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Consideration and discussion of pop possible action to purchase technology items from Coast Audio Video in the amount of 9433 So that is basically uh, the interactive flat panel devices. Those are the fancy TVs that you can touch and they can teach from. We did purchase several of those this last school year and you know, the objective was to get all the elementary teachers consistent with that. So we found um, it didn't matter what class you had your child in, they would get equal instruction. Um, that's for three additional ones. Uh, two uh, will go to the fifth grade team, so every fifth grade teacher will have one. Two already did. And then the third is for one of the middle school teachers who uh, did not have anything in his room. Um, and uh, based on information that we got from him at the end of the year, talking to the principal, it will be used. So that is installation, product, the whole nine yards. Okay. Questions? Motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Um, number seven, consideration, discussion, possible action to purchase Chromebooks um, in the amount of $76,000. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So uh, we have had Chromebooks now for several years, and we've had one one down from eighth to third grade. Um, it's been a great thing. The teachers love it. Um, we've been able to do a lot of new creative things in regards to how we give instruction. So uh, there has been three different sets. The ones that were the oldest sets uh, go on year three and two on year four and five. The original plan or goal was to try and get three years out of the Chromebook. Uh, we've surpassed that. Uh, we've sent them all home, not all of them, but the majority of them home during this time. So uh, I've had to swap out, I don't know how many, uh, which is fine over this, but they've all usually been on the older sets. So um, we have the money to purchase new ones. The administration, Jill specifically, is wanting to have uh, the middle school students be able to take the Chromebooks home every day. That's what some other surrounding districts do. That's why there's a, uh, another book for cases. Um, so we need new ones. We're going to be getting all of the other ones back. Uh, if I were to guess, we're going to have to surplus a large portion of those. Some of them are done. They won't hold the charge. The screen's both broken. A lot of different issues. But we have gotten our use out of them. Uh, basically, have 250 new Chromebooks with cases to distribute to middle school sixth through eighth grade students. Do we have to? Do we have the, you know, the charging racks? I mean, will the old ones go away, and the charging, existing charging racks will be there to charge the new pieces that are still here? We still have the charging racks. Yeah. So the uh, the younger grades. Again, this is. Mrs. Foster's decision ultimately, but based on where she's at right now, she wants them to stay here. We don't want to send Chromebooks on to elementary students. So those will be plugged in with the, the carts. Now, the, the carts that we have for the ones that are being gone, we're, we, we'll still be able to salvage some, I think, and they'll be extras. Uh, so we'll keep them um, stored somewhere, and there may be a, a teacher, like maybe a gifted class wants a set, or you never know who would want to use a set. Maybe the library uh, will have enough where we can not have to buy more, but we'll have extras from the situations. What happens to a Chromebook in a school that has its useful life ended? Where does that go? I mean, does it get recycled? Is it just five uh, I'll probably talk to Andy and Gary on, on specifics, but you know, it will probably be a vote to, to surplus the ones that we know that are no good. Uh, and then that have to define what no good is, but um, they can be recycled. I've never done that before, so that would be a first. Um, I would think that we want to do a recycle path versus just throwing them away, because that wouldn't be a good idea. We'll have to see exactly what that looks like. Okay. All right. Questions? That was my question, too. I wonder what happened to the old ones. All right. I have a motion to approve the purchase of our Chromebooks. Motion to approve the purchase of Chromebooks. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Very good. Uh, number eight, consideration discussion of purchasing the Chromebook cases for the middle school. That's just to outfit the 250 with a case so if it's dropped. Right. Okay. Motion to approve? Motion to approve those cases. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, number nine, consideration discussion of possible action upon student transfer requests as recommended by the superintendent. We have these two particular transfer requests that are children of uh, current staff members, and so by board policy they could be approved. So that's my recommendation. Motion to approve those transfers. Motion to approve transfers. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Ten, consideration, discussion, and possible action upon agreement with Shelley Riley for contract and speech language services for the year 2021. As you might recall, Rusty Wilhoit was a full-time speech language pathologist here. He resigned 
Shelly will be his replacement this she will not be on an Oakdale teacher contract. She will be billing as hourly just for the time that she serves students in that related service. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 11, consideration, discussion, possible action to approve the mutual agreement between Coleman County and Oakdale Public School District for um, reconstruction, approval, repair, and maintenance of property owned in the school district. Um, my only comment to that is it's something we do annually, every single year. <clears throat> and we have taken great advantage of that. Um, not so much with the new commissioner, but with our former commissioner. Um, and uh, that's an important agreement to have when we want to maybe do a partnership where it's not so expensive and they have the funds and the personnel to do it and we provide material costs and we benefit greatly from that, so it's a good thing. This is particularly for paving, is that true? Yes, so paving projects. Paving, yeah. sidewalks, maybe even lights. There's all kinds of things that they can do that we've done here um, and we just didn't want to go through or we are over a $50,000 threshold to have to bid things out. <coughs> County Commissioner does that for us. So, do I have a motion to approve that uh, mutual agreement? Motion to approve the agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, number 12, consideration, discussion, and possible action on an agreement with alcohol and drug testing, ADTI, um, for services in 2020-21. This would be for random drug and alcohol testing for bus drivers, which is something that I think we, Marlene told me that we annually, this is something that we've just been doing basically. Oh. Motion to approve. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, number 13, consideration discussion of possible action to rehire faculty and staff as recommended by administrators and as listed on personnel report. I created a document so that we are tracking our employees by assignment, their classification to certified or support, their position status, if it's a new position or replacement position, so that we have a document that we follow through that when we have transfers or changes, we know who followed who where. And so that's what this document does. Under the column of contract, you might notice that it says either continuing, which would be a current employee on a regular contract, or temporary, and there's a number after that. Legally, we can employ teachers on temporary contracts for four semesters, and so this is, uh, Phyllis put on there a number indicating what year they would be going into it. So for example, temporary two would be going into their second year on a temporary contract. Two are in bold, just to draw your attention to the people that we introduced on the slideshow. And at the end of that document are the resignations, which are also listed on the slideshow. So this is more of a tracking tool for us moving forward that we can just bring revisions to you as we make changes. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. A motion to approve those actions. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fourteen. Consideration and discussion of possible action on application for approval of temporary appropriations for the fiscal year 2021. Yeah, that's an awful lot. Something we have to do, and right. just alerts the county that we are going to be assessing some, you know, that we need this money to run the school. It's prepared by our auditor. I didn't make any of them. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 14.1. Consideration discussion of possible action to declare district office equipment, athletic equipment, and building supplies as surplus and authorize administration to dispose of properly. Mr. Franz. So uh, we now have a master inventory asset list in the making. Wow, mass stuff. It's in the making. I, like I, I did call some other um, districts, ask how they did that. I didn't, I couldn't find one that said, yeah, call this company, they'll do that. It was, well, we went and took a thumbnail picture, we put it on a spreadsheet, 
and we went from there. So that's what I started. I'm not taking pictures of everything. I'm asking different people to send me things. For example, Gary Witherspoon has a huge spreadsheet. He is very meticulous at keeping track of what we've purchased technology-wise. So that is adding it on kitchen maintenance. But in the process, so we, we have a lot of stuff that uh, we need to get rid of. Um, we went I walked through the old gym and just started looking at things. These were items we've never used before. Well, we haven't used in a long time. Uh, some of it, I think, was given to us. Uh, we haven't used it. So I think that uh, by vote, if it's surplus, we can try and sell it, or we can offer to give it away and clear out some space and keep moving forward on finding out what we have. And the, the biggest challenge is getting a value for everything. Yeah. That, that's the hardest part. So I think we, we felt like we were in pretty good shape with the inventory because all technology items are barcoded. Mm -hmm. um, and as teachers check out for the, the summer, they will be given a Google form and asked to correct me if I'm wrong, but like to count how many chairs and tables in there. Things that would be under a certain value that have a short or life that we don't need to have a value on these that count. So I think items that we have covered under insurance, we have a value for those, like the buses, mm -hmm. the tractor, the lawnmower. But um, finding other values. But we, uh, it's, it's, it's on the, it's, on, it's progressing. No, very good. I mean, like, I remember Jerome brought this up probably about 18 months ago. And we're finally getting to the point of the transition and everything. And this is a good thing. Yeah. It really is. It's going to be a big list. That's, that's good. Because then that allows us to get rid of the stuff you're talking about that's just lying around here that doesn't need to be. So, Do the good. teachers have an opportunity to go and see if there's like something in there that they would rather have instead of what's in their classroom? Because I see like office desks, office chairs. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, just talked to one teacher this morning um, after she said, well, the fifth grade teachers are getting a new desk and I have one of their old desks. And I said, sure. I said, if you don't like those, you can come shop in the old gym. <laughs> <laughs> now, mo most of that stuff in the old gym is, uh, I say most, the majority of it is, is dated. Not in shape. Not in great shape. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it is an option for them to do that. We kept things for a long, long time. Okay, thanks, Mike. I appreciate you doing that. We all do, I, I'm sure. Drop a motion to um, declare that equipment excess as needed. Motion to approve. Second with appreciation. Yes. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 15, discussion of establishing a series of special board meetings or work sessions so that the board may discuss and plan for long-term goal strategies, initiatives, programs, and visioning for the district. That's written way better than the memorandum I handed you. Um, but essentially what this is, is it's what we started to discuss in April and we sort of been discussing when we were going through our whole superintending hiring process. Um, and that's to really start getting down into where the district needs to go in the future and getting buy-in. And not necessarily buy-in to really feel what the community desires. I mean, we represent them. I, you know, we have to take it kind of where their thinking is. And my whole thought process of being able to come up with some strategic plan in some manner that offers different courses of action that stipulates how your taxes will be affected if you're going this direction, how your taxes will be affected if you go in this direction, how your taxes will, all those things so that the entire tax paying base here at Oakdale are armed with all the information that we have. And then I think from that process, people will be able to make, make a decision. Um, I, I, there's no doubt that we need a physical document that people can see pictures that they can kind of grab a hold of because to me that that resonates with just kind of or a work group over here and a work group over here. What we need to do as a board and with Dr. Pierce 
years is kind of maybe wrap that plan up and how we see that coming together and how do we what medium do we present? Do we pay for an outside agency to come in and really do an all-encompassing review of the entire district? You know, our past growth, what our future growth is going to be. Um, how do we deliver education for the residents of Oakdale in the best manner possible? With all that said, I recommended some general dates. Those are just recommendations for me. I picked Thursday. Um, and balance your calendar with that. We'll run it through Dr. Pierce. Um, as far as what we can do individually, then I'll let him kind of, you know, kind of hurt us cats since we can't kind of discuss directly. But at least this is a start point for some dates. And I think I picked, I didn't pick anything in May just because of everything that's going on. We have one in June, two in July, and one in August. And to me, four sessions to align and how I worded it. And I think how we can have some maybe executive sessions in this. That, we, that we're taking a strategic plan, trying to come up with just brainstorming ideas. We're aligning that with what we as the board think. We're going to align that with evaluating the superintendent on sort of district goals. And that's the piece that where we can do executive sessions where we're talking about this specific evaluation. Because to me, we can tailor his evaluation to the strategic plan of the school that gets made, however we determine make it. Um, and there's just it, it all coalesces together. I think that's something we can present to the community and get their input on and then roll it out and hey, here's what we think. What do you think? Mm -hmm. It's massive if you ask me. I mean just trying to get surveys and trying to get people's opinions and we all have different opinions, but I think now is the time that we need to go out and make some concrete decisions. We're going to do this, or we're going to do this. The people need to know. And as leaders, we should be able to guide that. Uh, in my mind. So then, Todd, are these, are these public meetings, except for the time when we would enter executive session? Yes, absolutely. They would be special, special meetings. Right. And then there may be, well, if we do the executive session or doing you know, because we haven't done that yet with Dr. Pierce. We haven't taken that, taken the superintendent evaluation and tailored it to where we're going next. Um, so those pieces would be a part of that. I don't have those down. Um, if that's not enough, if it's too much, hey, let's just, tell me what you think now. This is the one time we can kind of get specific about what you guys want as far as what's your, what's your thoughts. I mean, I want to hear. Well, are we going to do a survey of the community before we get started? I don't know. Do, okay. do we want to do that? I mean, I, this is, with that first meeting, I thought we could come up with sort of a game plan, an agenda. We could have a general agenda that we say, do we want to do this? I mean, it's whiteboard stuff, that first meeting. And then, you know, the second meeting in July, we may be refining that. The third in July, is kind of really getting specific to we need to bring in special guests to, to maybe get a little bit more understanding of what it means to pay off of two big line payments of two and a half million dollars and how that affects our school village, which is going to drop that significantly. I mean, we'll be down to about 16.2, we've been at 28. I mean, that translates to probably about $1,100 for a $500,000 house a year, it's a lot. Um, and then just what we need right now. Well, what are our current needs for the facility right now? Finish of the road. We're mandated to put the FBS in. Those things have to be done sooner rather than later. And that all ties into that. So my thought on the August thing was we go back to school right now. I think August the 13th is the first day of school. Our last meeting would be August the 6th. And to me, that would be a wrap-up. And then we would be able, we would have determined, yes, we need to do a, a, a community survey. The survey is done, we haven't put it out. I don't think it's, in my opinion, it's not wise to do a survey right now. It's summertime, people aren't, but they'll be back in the school mode come August the 13th. And I think by August 6th, we'll be able to roll some of this out. 
we've had four good planning sessions. Boom, 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 boom
or not? I mean, it doesn't have, have to be. Start? It could be. It could be after school starts. It, it could. I, I know there are the 10th, 11th, and 12th. I think are teacher in service days on this calendar. And I don't know if that's going to hold, but we could go to the next. We have a board meeting on the 11th. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it could go to the 18th. I mean, the beginning of school, we don't, this last meeting really, to me, is going to be a tie-up. Just, you know, it, it, it'll be, it may be better to maybe have it after a week of school. That way you're not rolling something out with sort of the, the craziness of starting school because it really will be like the first day of school for a lot of people. Like kindergarten first day of school, like because we haven't had school for so long. Mm -hmm. So what about August the 20th? Yeah. I mean mm -hmm. that's a week, that's a week after, or we could go to the 27th of August. To me, just getting it wrapped up and be able to, to present something to the community by September or some general ideas or have a plan, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna hire a master planner to come in and get started in the fall. That's a, that's, that's a good, to me, that's a good time. Yeah. So, August 8th, somebody throw something out there. That's August 20th is fine. August 20th? That's August. good. And I put, I put two at six, and I put two at 10, just I'm trying to cover you know, different people want it, or flexible at different times. So you want to go August 20th on the 10th uh, at 10 a.m.? And we do it in years, so off or not. You know, we're probably, if we had to close out, if they're doing a band or something in here, we could close off these doors and we could, you know, hold the chemistry class in here. It's <laughs> fine. Good? All right. Okay. Hey, Mr. France, I sent this to your email. The schedule. I saw it. Okay. So just note the August 20th, August 6th change. All right. Um, any other questions about anything? Anyone? Yes. Okay. Well, Mr. Bowman, thank you for. I, I love filming these. Today I didn't feel like I was being watched, even though we are. And we've got the wide angle up there, which is good. I think the public will like being able to see what we're doing right every week. I don't know why we didn't do it sooner. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is perfect right here. This is, this is going to work great. I can almost see myself up there. <laughs> no, this is good. I, I, I like, we're always transparent, but this really, people, we're really transparent here. And I don't want anyone to think that we don't have their best interest in in line when we will run these meetings. So mm -hmm. this is great. Mm -hmm. So with that, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. All right. That's good. You're still on camera? Yes, I know. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. Even, even the curveball, I threw the superintendent and myself with the pledge. I love the pledge. What happened? I'm working on a new This is what I Okay. So look what I did. This is what I did. Yes, she will be wanting to play. So.